The U.S. files a complaint with the World Trade Organization, claiming that China restricts exports of crucial commodities. China quickly rejects the protectionism charges and snaps right back with its own allegations against the state's restrictions on poultry imports. What is going on behind all of these trade disputes, and should you be concerned for your company? Hello, my name is Brenda Bailey Hughes, and I welcome you to our premier Cyber Focus. We're visiting today with Dr. Andreas Hoskrecht, Professor of Business Economics and Public Policy with the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University. He's here to help us understand why there may be more to this bickering than magnesium and chickens. Professor Hoskrecht, welcome. Thank you. So, who among our viewers should be concerned about these trade disputes and why? Well, in general, we live in a environment of increasing protectionism. Um, for example, China um, just came with this huge stimulus package and uh, uh, wanted to have a buy China uh, sentence with it. The same as the United States, by the way, did with its stimulus We've package. We've heard buy American as well. E exactly. Um, now, China has uh, introduced export restrictions on several key commodities, you mentioned already, magnesium, bauxite is another one, that are inputs for American and other countries' production, such as steel production, chemical production. Uh, so there is an impact on, on because simply uh, Chinese producers of steel, of chemical products, would have an advantage. Uh, and as you described already, it's a tit for tat now at WTO and now it's the poultry that is coming with it. But what it reflects certainly is uh, increasing trade tensions. And uh, from my viewpoint, there's a bigger picture and this bigger picture has to do with uh, the underlying trade imbalances that we see. The trade imbalances between the China and the US? Between primarily China and the US, but also China and other countries. You have to see that the U.S. trade deficit and the current account deficit over the last years was a major concern and indeed um, was also causal for the financial crisis, not only but also. How so? Because a current account deficit in a magnitude of 700, 800 billion as we had it for example in 2007 has to be financed through external capital. So we had a plethora of capital flowing into the United States, uh, lowering interest rates, causing excess liquidity, what was one reason for the bank behavior that caused all these mm. problems we're in now. Um, the trade deficit is, is primarily with China. To give you an idea, only last year we had a trade deficit with China alone of almost $260 billion. And interestingly enough, uh, also in 2009, although the overall trade deficit significantly declined, the trade deficit with China is still about $67 billion until April. So this is an issue that, that, that will concern politicians in Congress, and I expect that to, to, to be an issue over the entire year 2009. Interesting. And do you think that, you mentioned that the protectionism is, is on the rise. Can you give us some examples of that? Can you help us understand maybe an argument for and against? Because we hear Buy American as a good thing. Well, for an economist, protectionism is uh, a difficult issue. Protectionism clearly can protect specific jobs. So you can protect a specific industry and by doing that you protect the jobs there. But it comes with a tremendous price and the tremendous price is basically a loss of competitiveness, mm -hmm. a loss of productivity growth and overall slower economic growth. Uh, the cases against protectionism in economics are paramount and uh, while you know the sentence you have two economists in the room and at least three opinions, <laughs> <laughs> what is true? Uh, when it comes to international trade, you will probably not find an economist who would argue in favor of protectionism. Now, obviously, in crisis like this, this financial crisis and economic crisis we face, 
politicians feel tempted to, 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 to come up with protectionism because it, it serves their constituency. They want to be reelected. However, from an economist viewpoint, this is problematic. Coming back to the Chinese case, you have to see that uh, obviously the huge surplus China realizes with us in trade is a result of a undervalued Chinese currency. So this undervalued Chinese currency works as a what we would call unfair trade advantage against the US, causing this huge surplus from the Chinese viewpoint, the huge deficit from our viewpoint. It's not new for the US to ask China to appreciate its currency, correct? When, when did that request begin and, and what has been a, the response to requests to, to value it? You're absolutely correct. The U.S. authority already under uh, Bush administration has uh, urged China to change its exchange rate regime. And indeed, formally, China has changed its regime in July 2005. Since then, though, the Chinese currency has appreciated by less than 20% against the US dollar. So there is some move, but very, very marginal and very, very slow. Um, it is uh, very, it's probably surprising for you, but an economist cannot tell you actually what is the neutral, the correct mm. exchange rate. But we can say that the Chinese currency should probably appreciate by at least another 20% that we come in a range where we talk about fair pricing of its currency. So this undervalued Chinese currency has direct effects for, for American producers and consumers. It is good for the consumers going to Walmart. Mm -hmm. I give you the idea, Walmart alone in a year imports more than $10 billion products from China, only Walmart. Now, obviously it comes with disadvantages. It comes, for example, for producers in the United States, for example, of steel, mm -hmm. that are exposed to very cheap steel imports from China. So there is direct and indirect competition from Chinese producers on US markets uh, and jeopardizes their competitiveness. And the same token, obviously, if you aim as an American producer to sell to China, if the Chinese currency would appreciate, it would increase competitiveness uh, for American exports there and worldwide. So um, I think um, the Obama administration will and has to continue producing pressure on Chinese monetary authorities to faster appreciate its currency. Thank you for your insights. So what I'm hearing is that while magnesium and chicken may not really matter a whole lot to us. Uh, the undervalued currency, the trade deficit could affect us all. Would that be a correct Absolutely. summary? Absolutely. It's a, it's a worldwide imbalance and this imbalance does not disappear. We would have thought now with the, with the financial crisis that the imbalance would get smaller and smaller and smaller. The imbalance with China is marginally getting smaller. It's still huge. And I think it's a major concern because it basically bears in it, you know, the seeds of another future crisis. And also see that the Chinese use two instruments for that, uh, to keep its currency so strong. They restrict capital inflows and they buy US dollars. The Chinese monetary authorities, the central bank, it's called the People's Bank of China, sits on more than 2,000 billion US dollars for an exchange reserves what they hold in form of mostly treasury securities. So from a, an American viewpoint, from a policymaker viewpoint, you don't like that. Because basically China can indirectly influence interest rate levels in the United States. Um, we're depending more and more on the behavior of the Chinese central bank regarding our financial markets. So those imbalances are unhealthy. And uh, from a policy viewpoint, you don't want to be depending on other governments to that extent. And therefore, we had when the Obama administration came into office, they started verbally to address this issue by calling China a currency manipulator. A technical term that would, if written in the Treasury report, annual report, enable Congress to act. 
It was not written down in the, in the Treasury report, but it was a first clear sign that the Obama administration sees the problem, and I'm pretty sure that we will see more of that coming in fall. So you are hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm always hopeful. You're always hopeful. And hopefully we are hopeful as well. Thank you for joining us and join us again for our next Cyber Focus.